In this video, we present a system that combines augmented reality, virtual reality, and 3D scanning to allow people to collaborate on physical activities while being at a distance. The setup involves one user who is on site in a makerspace that's shown in yellow. And this user is using an AR headset while their workspace and physical objects are being scanned by a 3D camera. The other users are connecting remotely from home, either through a computer screen or through VR headsets. All users inhabit the same virtual space, which contains physical and virtual objects. For the first example, we illustrate the interaction between the on-site user and the remote desktop user. This video is recorded from the perspective of the remote desktop user, who can look around the virtual space by moving the camera angle to see from different perspectives, and they can also collaborate by being able to draw and point at locations in the virtual space. So they can indicate how objects should be moved, for example, by taking that side and moving it over here to this location. In this case, the remote person is guiding the person in the makerspace about how different objects should be moved um, and rearranged. So they can, for example, take an object and put it on top of another object, and so on. We can also use more three-dimensional objects that are available in the makerspace. So in this case, this is a lamp that was built in the makerspace, and we can bring it into this virtual space for collaboration. So the remote participant can say how different areas should be connected. So for example, uh, that the on-site makerspace user should build a ramp that connects uh, those two pieces so that a ball can fall down. The 3D camera only scans a portion of the on-site user's workspace, so we can combine that with a 3D model of a real makerspace. For example, this environment is a 3D scan of a makerspace at the Harvard School of Education. By placing users in the space, we allow people to feel like they're collaborating together in a familiar environment. Now, the on-site user will be wearing an augmented reality HoloLens device. This allows them to be interacting in a space that contains both virtual objects, like you see here, being manipulated, and physical objects, like the lamp that we showed earlier. So in this case, the virtual objects can be manipulated through the augmented reality device, which tracks people's hands. And the remote user that's on the on the computer can, for example, create annotations to indicate how objects should be changed. So in this case, modifying the lamp to become like a monster. And in response, the person who's in the makerspace can pick up virtual objects in order to, to think and brainstorm how that would actually look. So for example, picking up these eyeballs and uh, placing them on the lamp. And in this way, we can create objects that are both, they're kind of hybrids between physical objects and virtual objects. Um, <clears throat> and now we have a scene that includes both physical objects, virtual objects, and annotations. And these objects can be further modified by adding even more virtual uh, modifications on them. With the system, we can also develop educational scenarios by adding virtual overlays on real objects. In this case, this is a robot, and it has proximity sensors. And we can visualize the, the data from these proximity sensors as a person is interacting in real time. We can also display a circuit diagram that shows what happens to the internal circuit of the robot during this interaction. Data from the real objects is used to drive these virtual overlays. For example, here's a case where overlays show paths of electricity overlaid on a real circuit, and the oscilloscope graph shows real-time data collected from the circuit. Here's another example of an overlay that could be built for a physics class, which peers are using to communicate about the forces that are involved in torque. The system is being built to support remote users who have virtual reality headsets. In this case, we see a person in the makerspace who has augmented reality collaborating with a person at home who has virtual reality, and the person who is observing them from the desktop computer can communicate with them as explained earlier through the annotations. And through these facilities, we allow people to talk about objects that are physical as well as virtual, and to connect with many different devices into the same shared space. This can create a much more intense feeling of being present and create a sense of community. This kind of technology can also be used to expand on more traditional approaches. So in this case, a two-dimensional whiteboard can be used for collaboration, but an instructor can also use it to explain things that are more three-dimensional and interactive. And so this interactive representation can be used instead of 2D, and it can also be moved closer to physical objects so that students can understand the connection between theoretical explanations and their physical representations. 
Finally, we could also use digital models to explain how fabrication tools work and even present this to a classroom of students who are all connecting remotely.